Aloha, Stacking Ohana. This is Aloha Stacker, and welcome back to the channel. And uh, i got to say something funny. When I was writing the notes for this video, I wrote down 845 subscribers, but since then, we hit 850, so we hit the goal. The end of February goal is now hit on February 2nd when I'm filming this video, so... Thank you very much. We, we beat the February goal, so let's go ahead and push it up to 900. So, new goal. Uh, we already 150 subscribers. Let's, let's get to 900 by the end of the month. That would be awesome, and then we'll start talking 1,000. <laughs> so, uh, awesome. Uh, in today's video, it's all about the pillar dollar, also known as the pieces of eight and the ocho real. This was the world currency for hundreds of years, and today we're going to show off a few really cool items, starting with this. But before we roll into this, I want to give a quick plug to my friend Junius Maltby. Now he has a channel, it'll be a link in description, and he has done two videos, which I really would like you to check out after this video if you are interested and enjoy this type of content. He did a video on uh, the pillar dollar right here because I, I discovered this because of his video. So I went out and was able to go out and acquire one for a pretty decent price. So now I'm gonna show that off to you. And then he also did one on the history of the American dollar, of the US dollar, which started with this so and we'll get into that more into the video but uh go ahead and check him out he is awesome he does a uh he has a great channel and he talks a lot of history talks a lot of history of coinage and it is just it's just some fantastic content so if you don't know who he is check him out link in description this is his channel coin it's freaking amazing love it so moving on let's go ahead and talk about the pillar dollar this is a one uh, 2006 one dollar antique finished silver coin made by the Royal or the Australian Royal Australian Mint. And as it says here, the 2006 subscription coin commemorates Australia's early currency that the much sought after 1758 pillar coin. This reproduction offers collectors a unique opportunity to own a very special piece of numismatic history as the pillar coin credited with the inspiring dollar sign. The 2006 pillar coin has been skillfully crafted to reflect the original 1758 obverse and reverse design. The features feature two crowned columns, symbolism, the pillars of Hercules. The coin's obverse displays the crowned Spanish coat of arms. Now, the pillars of Hercules, there's actually a statue for that on the Rock of Gibraltar, which is right in between uh, Spain and uh, Morocco. So that's a really that's a really neat thing, and I've actually seen that uh, the uh, monument there many times. So if you've ever been to the Rock of Gibraltar, it's there. Go check it out. Uh, the mintage is determined by the collector's final demand, and that will actually be listed inside the box. So let's go ahead and open it up and show off what we got. So here's the outer box. We'll leave that. I guess we'll just leave that just kind of right, right there. Uh, here is the case, and before we get to the coin, we'll go ahead and show off with this. So this is the uh, the certificate of authenticity. Uh, this is number eight ninety five, and uh, so what do we say here? So number certificate. Authenticates the company 2006 $1 antique finished coin. Okay, so we already read what that says. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got here. So it's got a denomination of a dollar. It's nine. It's three nines fine silver. It weighs 60.50 grams. So that actually makes it close to two ounces. So that's pretty cool. And then, uh, so we got exclusively by subscription. So we get, I'll leave this up for a quick second so you can catch it. Uh, much so we'll go ahead and start down here so much has been written about the pillar dollar also known as the spanish dollar and it holds an important place in the collection of australia's first attempt at forming standard currency the collection is known as the proclamation coins or the currency of the first fleeters the proclamation coins were developed in an effort to rescue the colony's rapidly declining economy. The problems arose from the fact that the many coins from around the world were being used for trade, but each coin's individual value was always open to debate. Governor Philip King stepped in to bring some order to the currency system, taking a collection of coins and giving them an official value. There's a picture of him right there. Coins and proclamation and collection came from a range of countries, including Great Britain, Portugal, India, and the Netherlands. Coinage included the guinea, the Dutch guilder, the rupee, the ducat, and the Spanish dollar. Centuries later, there remains, there remains much debate about the makeup of the proclamation series and the level of success it's achieved in its attempt to bring about a currency standard. There is no disagreement, however, about the place that the pillar dollar holds in proclamation history. And here we have uh, the, the coins that were used. So that looks like the Gilder. I don't know what the rest are. I'll tell you. Those are the products, so they're listed from there. So let's go ahead and move on. The pillar dollars were struck in Mexico Mint and used cur as currency throughout the world for more than 300 years. So that there you go right there, 300 years. Today they hold a place among the most famous coins of all time and its design has been credited with inspiring the dollar sign. This is due largely to the obverse design which features the two crowned columns. So right here. 
These symbolize the Pillars of Hercules, the Straits of Gibraltar, where the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea meet. Between the pillars are two hemispheres that represent Spain's Old World metropolis and the New World of their Southern South American colonies. Ribbons were wrapped around the pillars, and it is the shape of these that is believed to be the basis of the dollar sign. There has, of course, been much conjecture on this topic, but popular belief leans in its favor. The coin's reverse displays the crown Spanish coat of arms, so you can actually see that see that right there before I bust the coin out. These coins are extremely rare and valuable today, prompting the Royal Australian Mint to offer this exquisite reproduction that will give everyone a chance to add the pillar dollar to their collection. In keeping with the Mint's highest standards, Christian coin features an unrivaled level of detail, and we're gonna you're gonna see that in a second anyway. So I think where does it list there was a there was a quantification because there was only nine thousand total made. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say it here, but I'll get the I'll get the total number. But the total ended up only being around nine thousand. So here's the here's the case. We bust it open. Uh, beautiful, beautiful presentation. Look at this presentation. Tell me that is just not spectacular. Let me see if I can get some better lighting rolling in. There we go. Let's make it a little bit shinier. So let's go ahead and take the coin out. And here we have right here the pillar dollar. Seventeen fifty eight one dollar. Now this is what this is would be original pillar dollar here, and then surrounded by. The outer the outer reaches of uh, what Australia put on to the uh, collector coin. So this is Elizabeth II, Australia, 2006, and then here we have Ferd Ferdinand the Sixth, and then Hispan for Spain, and then Rex. And then so you got the crown, you got the coat of arms, you have got the number eight for this for the uh, eight reals, and then just uh, mar maker's marks there. So that's the coin. It's absolutely stunning. This thing is absolutely beautiful. And, what I'm gonna, and the cool thing is what I get to show you next is the real thing. I've got the real thing that I'm going to show you next. So uh, those, so once again, go ahead. If you're interested more in the history of this, please check out the link in the description. There will be two videos linked to it, and they are fantastic. So I, I would appreciate it if you get a chance, if you like the history, to read that stuff. So let me go ahead and see if I can display this so we can keep it in view. And then we'll move this stuff off to the side. And we're going to go ahead and move on. Now I want to show you something special. So first we saw the commemorative coin. Now we're going to see the real thing. And I'm going to show it to you right now. And this is a 1739 pillar dollar that I was able to acquire. Now this is a shipwreck coin, and we'll get into that in a second. But basically, if you want to compare what it would look like if it was in mint condition compared to, you know, my my, uh, my version. So there you go, right there. So that's 1758, this is 1739. Pretty much nothing different about the coins themselves other than both made in Mexico City. Well, this is Mexico City mint mark. Uh, there you have it nice and clear there. And if we flip it around the back, you can see the eight rails. This says MF. I think the F just has to do with uh, the person who actually uh, made the coin. And then uh, everything else is pretty much the same. So it's absolutely beautiful. And this one's not in too bad shape for being a shipwreck coin. So let's get into that because this is going to be actually a really cool story. So this is a 1739 pillar dollar. Eight rails. It's 0.785 ounces of silver made at the Mexico City Mint. Now, this is from the Reisger Dahl shipwreck off South Africa. Okay, so, uh, oh, also real quick before I read the story. So the crown pillars of Hercules. Oh, no, so this, the obverse has the crown pillars of Hercules. So this is the actual, the obverse. And then the reverse is just the crown coat of arms from Castile, Leon. All right, so there's the coin. Let's go ahead and put that up where we can display it. Actually, can we get it on display? Let me, be right. Let me just pop it in here. Will it work? Nah, that's not working. So... No big deal. We'll just take uh, we'll just take this off and we'll display it here. And we're gonna go and, and I'm gonna read an incredible story of the shipwreck because this is kind of, this is pretty neat. So, in a cold October of 1747, the Dutch ship Rijgersdal, after being at sea for four and a half months, anchored off a beach near Cape Town to acquire provisions. When strong winds rose from the southeast, Captain Jan Blunt decided to make for the Cape without delay. As the weather worsened, many of the crew became violently seasick. 125 members of the crew had died during the long voyage, and now 83 were confined to their bunks, including the captain and first mate. Forced to anchor off the cape in the storm, the crew lowered the sails and hoped the weather would calm. As the storm ranged, the anchor rope broke and the ship was set adrift toward rocks offshore. A cannon shot from shore signaled danger, so the captain was brought from his sick bed to command the deck. But the crew could not keep the ship from hitting the rocks. Only 17 men survived. The wreck of the Riger's Doll dimmed into history until a group of courageous and ambitious treasure hunters discovered the account of the disaster recorded by its crew's survivors. 
The account stated that the money chest containing four bags of silver had been recovered on the beach at the time of the wreck, but only with very high risk could the ship be used to search for the rest of the money chests. With this clue, in mid-1979, treasure hunters recovered several thousand pieces of eight, or pillar dollars, minted by Spain in the New World between 1732 and 1744. And this, my friends, is hopefully one of them. Now, I don't have proof of that. I only have the proof of the uh, person I purchased this coin from. Uh, he's a reputable guy, and he bought it from, and he acquired it from a reputable person. So I hope it is. I mean, it sure fits most of the shipwreck style based on the uh, the wear patterns. Okay, so other other ones that I have seen pictures of are pretty identical to this. The only thing on this that made me curious was its weight. But I also read that these coins can lose up to thirty percent of their silver weight or of the entire weight of the coin uh, during that time that they were shipwrecked. While maintain actually maintaining a pretty decent quality of uh, of the pictures on the coin, so that's actually kind of interesting. Now, the Rigers doll that was discovered in 1975 was uh, by the salvage team of Brian Clark and Tubi Garrick. They salvaged the cannons and a great deal of lead. However, Jimmy Ra and Arthur Ridge found later some 6,800 coins. Divers later found the real treasure, the coffins of the big party of big with a big party of silver. A great majority of the coins from this wreck are Mexican pillar dollars in excellent condition, but it, but it also yielded a few hundred New World silver cobs, including Guatemala cobs, which are rarely seen from shipwrecks. So that is a pretty interesting story. That is, that is actually quite, quite fascinating to me. So let me flip around my notes so we can go ahead and move on to, so while I figured while I had this stuff out, I'm going to go ahead and bust out the rest of my collection of Spanish pieces of eight, pillar dollars, reals, and shipwreck coins. So I wanted to start with my first eight Ocho Real that I ever picked up, or pillar, uh, this isn't actually a pillar dollar, this is just an Ocho Real, because it doesn't, well, it does have, it is a pillar dollar, it's got the pillars here. So this is a 1786 uh, with Carlo, Carlos III, who was the king of Spain at the time, and look at that, look at that nose, nose Maddox, <laughs> that you, uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this one was made and also made in Mexico City, so it's got the Mexico City stamp. It says eight here, it's kind of worn where the R was at. But if you can see in the light, you can still see that the crown is sitting, is sitting over the coat of arms. And uh, so it's basically the crown Spanish shield uh, with the pillars, right? So very, very nice. This is a very nice representation. This was a, uh, 1786. Let me see. This one has 0. 0.7797 ounces of silver in it. And I think the, the fineness was it's 896. So 8.896 fine silver is how these were minted. So this is a very beautiful dollar. So that's a nice one. Let's go ahead and show you the, the next one that I was able to acquire. And this is an 1816, and this is Ferdinand the Seventh. Now this one's unique because it also has the same obverse, right? Where you have the pillars, the, the crown and everything. But this one was manufactured in Potosi. So there's the Potosi mint mark, and that was in Bolivia. So that's pretty cool. So it's a different location, and this one's got a really nice, uh, really nice... Uh, of obverse. It's much more clear, I believe, than, than this one. See, so you can still see out, make out some of the words here. So, so this is the second piece of eight that I own. So as you can see, you know, every time you got a new king, you essentially got a new coin. Now the difference on this one though, is that this one just has the name, right? This one just has Philip the uh, fifth. And they didn't, and before that, before they did that, they had the, uh, the pillars of Hercules. And moving on, Oh, actually, so this coin, believe it or not, so when I was doing research on this coin, this is actually 0.903 fine silver and holds 0.7859 ounces of silver. So this one actually increased the silver content from the previous generation. So that's kind of interesting. There's something I noticed. It's a little interesting fact that I picked up while I was doing the research. Next, I have an 1830 Two Real. Now, this one was actually minted in Seville, Spain, but it also has Ferdinand Seventh on it, who I believe is the same, has the same, uh, same king, right? So... But this one on the uh, on the obverse only has the uh, the crown with the uh, coat of arms, and uh, now you know it's Sevilla because it has or Seville because it has the S. Sevilla is how you say it in Spanish. It says two, so this is how you know it's a two real, and you have the S where the mintage was it made in Spain. So that's pretty cool. This one's quite worn, but I like this one a lot. Now this one is 0 0.812 fine silver and only weighs 0 0.1767 ounces of silver in it. So that's pretty cool. Now let's move on to my Cazador shipwreck coin. And I've showed this in, I've showed a lot of these coins in previous videos, but for those of you who knew haven't seen my videos yet, I think it'd be cool. It's just cool to show this off. Let me move that down a little bit. Okay, so this is genuine two real 
So the, this is called Al Cazador, which was the wreck that changed the world. And the, the cool thing is that there's a really neat story on the back where it says, in January of 1784, the economy of Spain's Louisiana colony was faltering. The king of Spain decided to send a warship, El Cazador, to Veracruz, Mexico, to load up with 450,000 pieces of silver to trade for the trade the worthless paper money and shore up the sagging economy. Sound familiar? Worthless paper money? Just saying. <laughs> the ship encountered a violent storm just 50 miles from its destination and sank. Spain never recovered its losses and had to eventually give the territory to France in 1800. Three years later, the French sold it to the United States, what was, and that was known as a Louisiana Purchase. These historic coins lay at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico for over 200 years until 1993 when a fisherman snagged his nets on something solid, perhaps some rocks. When he brought up the nets, it was not rocks that fell from his nets onto the deck. It was dozens of silver coins, coins from the El Cazador, the hunter, by the way, the wreck that changed the world. So that's a neat coin. I love these shipwreck coins, and it would be really cool one day to own... Uh, to own more. I'm going to keep going. I'm gonna, if I find these up for sale and they're a good deal, I'm going for it. And the final piece of that I have of this old Spanish money is the Escudo, the half Escudo here from 1788. And this is a half Escudo. This was also minted in Seville. This is 0.875 fine silver and it's 0 .04, 0 0.0475 ounces of silver. So I guess that's pretty close to probably the dos pesos I'm, get, I'm thinking from, uh, from Mexico. And, uh, and this one also has Carlos III on it. Uh, same, uh, pretty much since it's so small, it's the same uh, person as here. See? 1786, 1788. And on the obverse, we also have, let's see, let me clear this up. Okay, so there's a little S here for Sevilla. So this was also minted in Seville, Spain. And we have a crowned oval shield in the co in collar of, hold on, let me see, let me read my notes here real quick so I can explain what the actual back is. It's the crowned oval shield, and we call it golden, so it's a golden fleece that surrounds the golden, uh, the crowned oval shield, so, so that's pretty cool, so that's a beautiful little coin, it's, I mean, it's tiny, I mean, this is, this is the actual airtight for a dos pesos, and the coin's a little bit bigger than that, because it's a little bit thinner. So, I, so it actually, it's a little bit wider, but it's a pretty neat looking coin. So there you go. Right there, and that covers down the entire, my entire collection of Spanish coin, ancient Spanish coins, I should say, uh, going back to the early history of the world, of the, uh, the North America, really, because uh, this was our first dollar we used. The pillar dollar was the first, uh, this was currency up until we made our own silver dollars. So that's, that is pretty, that is a pretty interesting fact. It's really neat. It's a good part of Americana and a good part of history. I hope you enjoy this part and remember to check out those videos by Junius Mulpey because he goes way more in depth on this and he also does another great video about the history of the U.S. dollar which includes a lot of this information. Uh, the research is done. It's really good. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I want to thank you all. I can't believe you got me to 850 on the second day of February when my goal was at the end of the month. So let's go to 900. Let's do it. So thank you very much, my friends, and I will see you all on the next one. Aloha and mahalo.